Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I think that uh, everyone here hopefully has a desire to, to improve uh, your life, to improve your finances, to improve your family, to improve... Uh, you finished the sentence, but I, I hopefully... Um, you know, hope that you do have that kind of spirit of, of saying to yourself, you know what, I need to understand that there, there are no shortcuts to anything great I want to see in 2018. And, um, and I'm telling you, there's a process for anything that's going to be worth your while. There's a huge process. There's a price that needs to be paid. I think uh, maybe in 2017, uh, maybe some of you, you, you as a believer did a lot of spiritual uh, uh, window shopping. Uh, why? Because you knew that the moment you went inside and looked at the price tag, it was way too expensive <laughs> to do the change. But I believe that 2018 is the year where you're saying, you know, God, I'm willing to pay whatever price, whatever it takes to make the change that I want to see happen in my life. And, uh, and it's so easy. Listen, please listen to me today, okay? It is so easy to lose focus from doing what God wants you to do when you have life pressures that are constantly trying to chase you down and keep you from your growth. There's, there's three types of people here today. There's the, the person who has a fixed mindset, okay? Three, tip, three different types of mindsets. There's the fixed mindset. The fixed mindset is you're not going to change me. You know, like, no, I'm good the way I am and I'm good. Uh, it's, it's, it's my way or the highway. That's, that's your fixed. Then there's the stuck mindset where you're just stuck right now somewhere with a thought. You're stuck in a place in your life where you just don't know how to unclutter the clutter. And then there's the, then there's the, the growing mindset. And the growing mindset is the purpose of this message called change. And, and if you notice, we highlight the C-A-N that you can change. The question is, will you change? And, uh, and God wants uh, us to go through the process. I have painfully, and I'm sure many of you would probably, you know, agree with me, uh, that, that we have all painfully have made maybe some of the biggest uh, mistakes. And we have learned that in life, when you take shortcuts, you're going to end up waiting a little bit longer. When you take shortcuts... You're going to wait just a little bit longer. And we've all taken shortcuts with different things. I mean, we've, we've talked about this before. You know, it just take, you know, maps or ways for an example. You're trying to get to your place. You're always trying to beat the time that ways gives you or the map. The reality is this. You still got to drive <laughs> in the road in order to get to your destination. And, uh, and you can try to beat it all you want. But guess what? There's no shortcuts. When you, when you want to accomplish what God wants to see happen in your life, you cannot, you cannot let yourself take shortcuts. Now, I'm going to give you real quickly five common shortcuts that I personally believe that we can focus on today that we have all been guilty of. And so um, I want you to also, because I, I, I love it when people learn. I really do. I, I love learning personally, but I love it when you like to learn. Um, it, it's, it's, this is the time where you have to stop just uh, uh, listening to what you hear and, and doing nothing with it or listening to what you hear and not understand it. And so today I'm praying that the Spirit of God is going to align your eyes and that you're going to be able to see what He wants to show you. You're going to be able to hear with spiritual ears what He wants you to hear today, uh, what He needs you to hear today. And, uh, and so let's start with this. There's five common areas in your life, my life, that we tend to create shortcuts in. And, and they're going to cause you a lot of pain in your change. Are you ready? Number one. Number one. Common shortcut area is not leading yourself first. I'm going to give you a few real quick. Not leading yourself. Don't we always take shortcuts for personal development? Man, you just, I want to grow, but, but you'll do anything to make that happen fast. You know it, and that just doesn't work. The hardest person to lead is you. It's 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 the truth. E everybody wants to change until they need to make some changes. Everybody wants to grow 
until you need to mature in your growth. And that's what God wants. When I'm, when I'm talking on this, this message of change, I'm really talking about your, your, not only your, your personal development, I think what's most important for all of us, hopefully, is your spiritual maturity. There's so much spiritual immaturity in the church today. I see it over people that I have, that I know personally how we have been safe for many years, so immature. It's almost like they're no longer progressing, they're digressing more and more as I see them. Why? Because the listen, because this world, it's getting darker. This world is 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 putting the pressure on more. And so that's where you get that mindset or you start seeing people you're like, dang, what happened to him? Or dang, what happened to her? I'll tell you what happened. It's called pressure. It's called pressure. It's called lack of maturity in the things of God. God wants you to grow. So where do, where do we take a shortcut? Number one is not leading yourself first. Lead you. Lead you. I mean, think about it. It's hard to lead you. Try losing 10 pounds. Dang. That's hard. Right? Because it's hard to lead yourself to be disciplined, to eat healthy. Try fasting and praying. Huh? That's when you know who's in charge. When you start your fast and then you have a little slippy, slippy, you know what I'm saying? A little, a little, a little slippy, slurpy. <laughs> and it's like, oh, dang, Lord, forgive me. Uh, tomorrow, I'll start tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and, and then tomorrow, another little slippy slurp. And it just kind of, you know, it just keeps happening. That, that, that's the problem. We can't, we, we don't know how to lead ourselves because we're so immature. And, and that's going to change. Number two, number two, another place that we take shortcuts, this one's going to ouch, cheating on Jesus time. Huh? Let me see all my cheaters in the house. Yeah, we cheat on Jesus. Cheating on your time with Jesus. You know what? Today we have replaced, we have replaced intimate relationship with God with podcasts, YouTube sermons, I believe in all of them. Live streams, uh, uh, you know, pastors, prophets, teacher. We've we have replaced our time. When I say time, I'm talking about personal time with God, with a message that we listen to in our vehicle, and we say that was my time with God, or we just play the audio Bible. That's my time with God. No, that's not the kind of time we don't want to cheat God. Man, we want to give God our very best. I want to give God me. And when you learn to give God you, then we stop cheating on him. Anyone that you love, you love spending time with. Right? Personal time. And so what do we do? We, we cheat God with our time. We take shortcuts. And, and listen, once again, nothing wrong with those things. I think you should use those sermons, those podcasts to, to help you develop and, and to grow, etc. But, but, but not at the expense where you're no longer getting a personal revelation from God, where you can say, God spoke this to me. You know what I'm saying? Not Pastor Mauricio told me, Pastor Mauricio told me, or this person told me, or that person, or your favorite preacher, whatever. They said this. No, my question in 2018 is what is God speaking to you? I'm talking about fresh Rhema word. What did he say to you? Not what you read. Not, 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 not some email. Not some, some, some you know, some uh, uh, vlog or whatever. I, but what is God speaking to you? What is he saying to you? Because there's personal time with him. Number three. And then throughout the message, I'm going to hit these areas. So I want you to grow today and, and, and find these points in my message. Is that, is that a good challenge? Okay, good, good. I got three of you. That's okay. That's all I needed. I don't need all of you. Number three, we cut corners or we take shortcuts when we rush into things. Come on, I'm a rusher. Any rushers in the house? You just rush. You just try. You know, you just do it. And, it, and then you pay the price later. And it costs you later, right? We, we, we take shortcuts because we rush into things or we rush into relationships too. Um, I think it's very unwise when you just start hooking up with just anybody and everybody, I don't think there's any wisdom in that. 
You know, God made it very clear. You'll know a man and a woman by their fruit. Uh, but we've gotten rid of the fruit, and, uh, and we've got a lot of mixed nuts instead. <laughs> Number four, not giving thoughtful preparation to decisions. Not giving thoughtful. We take shortcuts when we are not giving thoughtful thoughtful preparation to decisions in other words come on think for a change think for a change think like be thoughtful what are you going to accomplish this year if you're thinking about starting a business if you're thinking about getting a better job if you're thinking about increasing in some area in your life man make a thoughtful decision prepare for it plan for it Organize for it, and you watch and see what will happen. But we like taking shortcuts. By what? By not thinking. Why? Because thinking hurts. Thinking is work. But it's going to be good for you. Number uh, five, not seeking wise counsel first soon enough. Not seeking wise counsel first soon enough. What do I mean by that? Well, most people seek counsel when they're already deep into trouble. Then they seek counsel. But let me tell you something. Sometimes it's a little bit too late to start seeking counsel when you're already deep in the mess. And so these are, I believe, five of the common, most common shortcuts that we all take in this life. And you know what? That needs to change. It needs to change. It needs to change. We cannot compromise our time with God in 2018. You cannot compromise your call in 2018. You cannot compromise what God wants to accomplish in your life in 2018 because you're not willing to go through the route that God has already pre-ordered for you. As you notice, when you walk into our church, it says that God has ordered your steps, right? God has already ordered your steps, and you have to be in step with God. And the question is, well, how do I do that, Pastor? Because, man, it's hard. It's hard to, 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 to be in step with God. It is when your flesh is in control. That's why we fast and pray. We fast because it, it begins to it begins to, uh, to show you who's in charge. Obviously, the flesh is never going to lead you any closer to God, right? We already know that, right? I mean, does your flesh wake up in the morning just singing praises to God and saying, let's go read our Bible? No, it leads you to your phone and, and it leads you to your, you know, your food. Your co we, we have to dethrone this king called stomach. We, we got to dethrone. that When you learn to dethrone these delicacies that you and I uh, are so uh, commonly uh, aware of and commonly living in, which we live in this world, but, but we can't be of it. You know, it's difficult when, when there's all these things. And so when I read the Bible and as, as I preach every single week, I, I, I've learned this. Never read the Bible as if it's this historical book or this historical reference. I, I want you to understand that every single character in the Bible, that, that God has been so graciously awesome to show us their lifestyle, to show us not only their, their, their wins and their victories, but also to show us their shortcomings, to show us their, their, their dark moments, to show us their painful lifestyles. You know why? He did that so that when we read their life, when we read the, the Bible, it becomes spiritual surgery for your heart. Read the Bible so that it becomes spiritual surgery. Why? If the Bible is not convicting you, there's no surgery happening. The word should, when you read the word, there should be times, most often it should be ouch. Now, ooh, I got a good word from heaven. Ooh, ooh, so good. Oh, ooh, I got a good. No, if it's always ooh, okay, Dan, you're just, you're, just, you're just doing it for your benefit. But when it's like, oh, dang, God, that cut my heart. I was like, that's right. I try to cut that. I cut you. Right there. I, we need to deal with that area. Right? When God cuts you, it's a good cut. And, and he wants to begin to address those hard issues in your life. And so perfect example is, is being a person. When you fast and pray, you can be more vulnerable. 
you know, David is someone I love speaking about, but I'm not going to preach on him today. But I'm going to take one of the verses of David because, you know what, David was a man's man. I mean, I tell you, if most men today stood next to David, we'd probably look like little girls. This guy was a man. He was no joke. This guy was a warrior, man. He, he knew how to uh, not only love God with all of his heart, uh, but, but this man knew how to fight battles like, like a champ. And, uh, and, and just an amazing man. But he also had this, this, this intimacy with God that just made him so well known today. I mean, I think when I say the name David, uh, most people remember that he was a man after God's own what? Heart. We, we already know that about David. But, but, but what was it about David that, that made him or helped him endure through, the, through the, the hours and the days and the years of constant change that God wanted to make in his life ever since he was a young boy. Look at this. I want you to look at Psalm 57 verse 2. Psalm 57 verse 2. Look at this. This is really good. He said, I cry out to God most high. I cry out to everybody. Say, I cry. I cry. Say, look at your neighbor. Say, I cry. To God most high. Listen, during these 21 days of fasting and prayer, we should get to the place where we need to start crying. And I'm going to explain what that means. There's got to be a cry on the inside of you for change. There has to be a cry inside of you for growth. There has to be a cry inside of you in order for you to go to the next level. If there's no cry in you, you ain't changing. I'm telling you, there's got to be a cry. Look, he says, I cry out to God most high, to God who will what? Fulfill what? I, I'm sorry, fulfill what? I'm sorry, fulfill what? Notice it and say, to fulfill your purpose. God's not into fulfilling your purpose. God's into fulfilling his purpose. Too many of us want God to serve our purpose, when God says, no, I want you to serve my purpose. This year is the year of change, and the way you change is learning what is his purpose. And sometimes the purpose that you're living now is not the purpose that you desire. But at the end of the day, when you know that God, when you know that God is most high, then you'll realize that he is above all of your adversity. When you know that God is mo most high, then you know that he is above every challenge, above every fear. He is above every trouble. He is above every pain. When you know most high God, when there's the right cry in you, you know regardless without a shadow of a doubt, whatever it is you're facing, that he's above it all. He's above it. And there's got to, but see, th this fast is the fast to cry. Cry out and watch what God would do. Uh, I'm going to be vulnerable with you. Um, because the moment you begin to move towards God, uh, God's purpose is the moment where it gets real. <laughs> I'm telling you. It, the, the moment you begin to steer the ship towards God's purpose, not your purpose, God's purpose, uh, I'm telling you, stuff happens. Um, I just, I was in, in Mexico doing some work. We, we have leaders there and teams and pastors and people we train. And uh, so I worked. And then after I worked, I, you know, we hadn't had a vacation in a year. And so I told my, my, my family, we're going on vacation after this, okay? So we went on vacation. While we were on vacation, um, I've, I've always wanted to take my kids to go out and do quads. I, I love motorcycles. I love anything that's uh, crazy. And I said kids, y'all want to try out quads? They're like, yeah, dad, let's do it. And so I took my, my son and daughter uh, on the quads. And while we were out um, in the mountains, uh, my daughter was uh, following the guide. I was following my daughter, and then my son was following me. And while we were riding, it was like my whole life went in slow motion. My daughter is driving, um, and the guide changes routes. And, um, and you know what? When you're on trails, you should never change routes. I think sometimes a lot of Christians change routes. <laughs> Stay with me. So he changes routes. 
And he said, you know what, um, I'm going to change this route because that right there is too dusty. In other words, he's like, I don't like it. He says what he said to me. And I said, okay, fine, dude, you're the guide. Go, let's go. So we changed routes with him. Well, as we're in this route with him, what ends up happening next was I'm riding behind my daughter. My daughter's um, quad begins to slide down the hill, and the left wheel hits the mountain, and she literally went flip up in the air, and the quad fell on top of her. All I can remember is my, my bike was still going. This is at speed. All I remember is I jumped off the bike. I didn't stop the bike. I jumped off the bike into the air, and I got under the quad that she was under, And because I, 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 it was already good. It was like slow motion. It already fell on her, and then it bounced up, and it was about to crush her again. And I got in there, and I, and I put my body under the quad, and I pulled her body out quickly. She was passed out. Then she woke up, and she was, like, moaning, groaning, a lot of pain, suffering. You know, she, her fingers were all cut up and, and just, you know, all kinds of stuff, just bad. And as I was pulling her out, I was, you know, just, like, just, you know, checking her and, like, praying, God, you know, we just bind this in Jesus' name, whatever, because she was in and out. And then I, I find to the, the, the guy, it's amazing how some people, listen, know who you hang with. <laughs> Man, this guy didn't know what to do. Man, you better make sure you got the right people in your corner when, hit, when, when stuff hits the fan. You, you better have the right day. And, and so this dude was the wrong guy. <laughs> he was the wrong guide, and he was the wrong guy. And so I'm like yelling at him literally. I'm like, you know, go get me cold water. Anyways, so I got my daughter. I'm picking her up already. And she's like, you know, kind of like, she's like, uh, she's like I, I don't know. I and she's just like mumbling I get her on the quad because I'm going to get her now back and we have to ride back and uh, as I'm as I'm sitting her there uh, she just literally passes out but while she passes out she passes out with her eyes wide open and she stopped breathing I'm not kidding you I've seen many dead people I've seen people breathe their last breath when I saw my daughter I cried out to God. I shouted God's name with all of my lungs. And I started laying hands on her. And she's out. She's, got, she's just like this, guys. Look at me. This is what she was like. No breathing. That's it. No breathing. And I'm listening to her breath. I'm checking. No breath. And I'm crying out to God right there in that moment. And then as they're bringing me water and everything, I'm pleading I'm crying I'm telling God and I'm and I have a lot of other things in my mind but let me tell you something the supernatural work of God then took place because then I got a whole bunch of, of water and poured in nothing and then all of a sudden as I'm praying and crying and screaming and shouting to God thank God I was shouting to God and 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 she literally she comes back and she's breathing again you know and she's like and none even know and all she tells me she's like um, you know, where, where am I? And so anyways, we got her back to the hospital. They had trauma, doctor, all these different things. Praise God. Here's the miracle part is that all she has right now is a neck brace. They found a spring in her neck. And, of course, she's all bruised up in everything. But the reason I share this with you is because when I read a verse like this, I cry out to God most high, to God who will fulfill his purpose for me. Let me tell you something. When God has a plan for your life, it's not your purpose. It's his purpose to see it happen. And when you begin to have a cry of the Father, when you know how to cry out to God most high, the guy who is above any accident, the God who is above of anyone who stops breathing the God who is above any person that has sickness disease when you cry out to that God that is the God that comes down and he will fulfill his purpose for your life Amen. you have to understand that it's of course my my little girl you know we're in the hospital and she's at home resting now she's going to make it to Anmore she's a little trooper and, and just everything, the doctors were tripping like, like nothing hurts, her neck didn't hurt, not, nothing. I mean, yes, she's in more horrible pain right now, but, but I'm telling you, there's something to say when you choose not to take a shortcut 
when you choose to go through the process that hurts the most is the time that God will make you the blessed the most. He will. But when you're trying to skip, when you're trying to get a little shortcut, when you're trying to cut a corner from something that God is wanting you to go through, you're going to wait a very long time. And I, I do. I thank God. Oh, yeah. And to top all this, I had my GoPro on. So I have all this on video. I'm not going to show it to you, but I have it all on video. But it's something for me. It's something that God has reminded me, Mauricio, when you cry out to me, and I want to fulfill my purpose, Mauricio, I will do it to accomplish my will, not yours. And it is his will that my daughter live and not die. And it is his will that your life lives and not die. It is his will that you prosper and not go under. It is his will that you go above and not beneath. It is his will that in 2018 you change because you can with him. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. It's his will. So you got to learn how to serve your purpose and not, not trying to serve for your position. And I think there's too many people right now that we're too stuck. And I keep seeing it over and over again with, with Christians always just serving to get something. No. Tell me how that's working for you right now. Tell me how much you've grown Tell me how much further you've gone with God now. Come on. God wants fruit, not nuts. Fruit. Show me the money, right? Remember that movie? Okay, here's what God says. Show me the fruit. Show me the cry. Show me where you called on me, and then I showed up, and I did something awesome for you. Show me that. That's what God's saying. That's why when we say change, we're saying in 2018, God wants new testimonies for you and me and that's just one of other things I went through you can look at my eye right now it's all jacked up right now and everything listen when when you when you're living for his purpose there is pain uh, there is trauma sometimes because uh, that was a very traumatic experience uh, there there is a, there is a, a sometimes even setbacks but I have learned in the last 21 years with God, every single time that I've had a setback after setback after setback, God's comeback has always been greater than my setbacks. Always. Every time that I've taken five steps back because the enemy has pushed me back, God has always catapulted me 20 steps forward. You have to learn how to serve the purpose. Who's the purpose? Well, let's talk about Daniel. Daniel's a perfect guy to talk about because you know what? Daniel was the perfect person who understood purpose. And I want you to just take a few moments and I want you to go with me in your Bible because here's the reality. I want you to know that in 2018 that not even haters can stop you. Let the haters hate. Let the haters talk. Listen, you find out who your real friends are when you're at your worst. I'm telling you. So just, just don't, don't, don't even go there. Uh, are you guys ready for this? Because Daniel shows us how to serve the purpose without shortcuts. And if you know anything about Daniel, my God, uh, that man has lived. He lived a very difficult, challenging life, but a very profound, supernatural, life-changing, life-altering life, regardless of all the challenges the brother faced. And so I want to talk about him today because every single time that you want to move forward, you have to understand that there's a price that comes with that moving forward. And that takes maturity. Uh, look at someone, play, please tell them. And this is, not, this is not to be cute. I, I want you to look at someone and, and say to them, you know what, we need to mature spiritually a little bit more. Yeah. And if they're mad at you, just tell them you see. <laughs> Serve the purpose. Okay, let's talk about Daniel real quickly. So I'm going to read in Daniel 1 right now, but I want you to first listen, okay. So Daniel... Daniel is someone who is living with his mom and dad. Most scholars, when they write about Daniel, 
um, they say that he was a teenage boy when he was, ta- when he was taken captive by uh, Babylon and uh, was brought to serve uh, one of the most darkest kings um, or presidents of, of history, which was King Nebuchadnezzar. He was living comfortably with his family, okay? He was uh, living righteously with his family, living the customs of his Jewish, uh, 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 you know, DNA, his background. And just out of nowhere, he is now um, basically uh, taken captive and he's uprooted and he's being taken to Babylon to go and serve the king, him, and, and some more Jewish uh, 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 young boys, and I want you to understand that these these were teenage boys. Okay, so here you have Daniel, who as a teenager is is experiencing this trauma of being taken from what's comfort, being taken from what's what's normal, being taken from his family. When you fast and pray, you're taken from a place of comfort because food is what it's comfort food, right? So, so when God wants to make a change in your life, he will take you from a place of comfort into a place of discomfort. And so regardless of, of Daniel being taken out of what was normal to him into a foreign place in Babylon, Daniel was not moved. This is the hour where you are not to be moved by whatever it is that you're going to face or what you're facing right now. And so let's learn about about Daniel here because he's the perfect guy to talk about. Daniel chapter 1, verse 15 through 17. Hurry up. Let's read this together. And so we know that he's serving the wicked king. And uh, he's now starting his preparation for these young Jewish boys. And it says, and the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's what? Yeah, in other words, all the goody, goody, goodies, all the good stuff, carne asada, you know, uh, what else, ribs, you know, cowboy ribeye, mashed potatoes, <sighs> right, pollo asado, lo, lo salsita verde con tortillas, frijoles, arroz. so good, so good, <laughs> so so daily they, they, they brought the king's delicacies and, and, and the wine which, which he drank. So basically the king said, I want you to become me. I want you to take my custom. I want to custom you to me. And that's what happens with a lot of Christians. You get custom made, but it ain't by God. Oh, we'll stop right there. Got a few people mad. Uh, and, and three years, look at this. And so... Custom drinks, custom uh, food, and, and for three years of training for them so that at the end of that time, they might serve before the king. Now, from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. To them, the chief of the eunuchs gave names. He gave them Daniel, the Belshazzar uh, to Hananiah, which is Shadrach. Then you got Meshach and Abednego. That's where those three uh, uh, names come from, which we all know the stories of, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being in the fire. And, and there's three that the king threw in there, but there was a fourth one walking with them. And they said, and the fourth one looks like the son of God. There, there's something so profound about living this type of lifestyle. And so look what happens. Uh, but verse 8, but look at this, verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart. Let's all say that together. Ready? One, two, three. But Daniel purposed in his heart. Everybody again. But Daniel purposed in his heart. Daniel did what? Purposed. What does God fulfill? Purpose. Do you think it was God's purpose that Daniel be placed in Babylon? Yes, it was. Yes. Maybe your situation right now is a part of God's purpose. You just don't get it right now. And you don't like it. Why? It doesn't feel good. But Daniel purposed in his heart, no matter what circumstance I'm in, I purpose. What What does he purpose? Look, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not what? 
defile himself. He's like, man, there's no way I'm going to defile myself. He says, with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God brought Daniel into what? Favor. Let me tell you something. When you stand up for God, he, he just spoils you with favor. Woo! Divine favor, too. When you say, I ain't going to defile myself, God says favor. Look, divine favor, goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my Lord, the king. So we know Daniel's asking him, hey, I don't want to eat like that, man. Can we just do something about that? And the guy's responding, hey, listen, I fear my king who has appointed your food and your drink. For why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are, uh, who are young age? He says, then you would endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. So all of them were living in the custom of their God. Verse 12, Daniel says to him, please test your servants for 10 days. Please test us 10 days of fasting. Just 10 days, test me. And let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies and as you see fit. So deal with your servants. So he consented with them in this matter and tested them for 10 days. Some of you right now, you probably need a 10-day fast. Not fast food. You need fast. Some of us, our fast is del taco burrito with bean and cheese. We'll just leave that one alone. <laughs> Jacked up someone's Del Taco lunch. And at the end of 10 days, their features appear. Look at this. So now they're fasting vegetables, water. Look, listen. And at the end of 10 days, their features appeared better than, than, and better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus the steward took away the portion. Man, he took away the carne asada. He took away the beef. He took everything. He took all the delicacies away and the wine that they were all to drink, and he gave them all vegetables. Let me tell you something. When you choose not to defile yourself, you get influence. You influence the change situations. You influence the change people but when we defile ourselves we influence others to also defile themselves as well one man changed an entire crew or group of people that were being in training for three years to serve for the purpose of the king and look and as for these four young men god gave them knowledge god gave them skill in all literature and all wisdom and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. And then, here's my part of it, and then all hell broke loose. You see, when you decide to move towards God's purpose, Daniel had ups and Daniel had downs. We think that success should always look like this. But true success always looks like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody wants this. It's not realistic. Everybody needs this because that's maturity. And so Daniel, yes, though he conquered he started, he started with his personal time. He started dealing with his flesh. He started, see, when, when, when you begin to read the story here, um, he, he, he understood that I have to, if I, don't make a, if I don't make a stand right now, if I don't make a statement right now, they're going to start treating me like them. See, when you don't stand up for God, then, 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 then people then just begin to put up with you. And, and they start treating you like they treat themselves. But there was something that, that separated Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that was so 
uh, influential that, that, that the people in charge changed even the diet of every single astrologer, magician, Chaldean, every single person that was there to serve the king, Daniel had influence. But know this, every single time that God gives you favor, the haters, haters, haters come and hate. They do. You got the jealous people that come and talk about you. You got the jealous people that want to see you go down. You got people that want to snuff out your position. You got people that say things like, I can do it better. And this is what happened to Daniel. If you read his life story, his, this was his story. It was always one high. First the king is for him. Next the king's against him. Then the king is for him. Then the king's against him. Man, Nebuchadnezzar had all kinds of dysfunction. The guy was dark. He was a pagan. He lived in a pagan nation. How is it that you can live in a pagan nation and still stand up for what's right? In other words, Daniel says it's possible to do it. It's possible to live right even in a wrong world. It's so possible. And today we know, you know and I know, that we see so many young people and old people too. We so easily compromise by the delicacies of the choices we make, not knowing that the shortcuts we're taking are only going to prolong the blessing God wants to bring you. It prolongs it. It's going to take longer. You're going to be more frustrated. You're, you're going to be more agitated. But, but if you allow God to take you through that, that process of, 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 of having to be uh, uh, literally pruned. You know, during this fast, this fast is not for us to look spiritual. This fast is for us to say, God, I want to be like Daniel, a man who, who, who purposed in his heart to not defile himself, that he may please him. Daniel didn't do this to please men. He did this to please God. And even when everyone else didn't want to do it, Daniel still purposed in his heart what he was willing to do. When, when you read this story, this, this, this scripture suggests that the food that the king was serving was the kind of food that the Jews weren't allowed to eat. Please understand this. It wasn't just like, oh, I don't want to eat food because it's, oh, that's gross. I hate queso. You know, like, oh, yeah, that gives me gas. No, it wouldn't even like that. L listen. Daniel had a custom. He had a Jewish tradition. He had principles that he lived up to. And so when, when they were trying to bring him something that was foreign, that wasn't right, uh, he could have if he wanted to because once he was out of his mommy and daddy's roof, he can say, hey, I'm not under that lifestyle anymore. I'm under this king. So, excuse me, I'm sorry. I, I'm under that. So I better do what he says because I'm under his power now, <laughs> not Daniel. See, Daniel refused to, to, to change the custom of his faith. He refused to change the custom of his relationship with God. He refused to, to compromise his intimacy with his God. Why? Because he understood that his relationship was way more important than trying to please a king who had power to promote him. And so many times we're, we're so, we're so, we live in a society of kiss butt. We do. Just kiss butt, kiss butt, kiss butt. And let me tell you something. There is no God in kiss butt. There isn't. There isn't. There, 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 is, there is no integrity. There's no integrity. When, when, when you're going to say that I purpose in my heart, then you better say this. I have integrity in my heart. Yes. And, and, so, and so to give you a modern day example, that's kind of like, let's say you have, um, you, have, you have a child, right? We'll call him Pepe. And then Pepe goes, to, <laughs> Pepe goes to Johnny's house. And Pepe was already told. He grew up in the custom like, hey, Pepe. Mom says and dad says, you know, dude, we don't watch that. We don't play those kind of video games. You just don't do that. And then Pepe has been under the house, under the covering for so long that he understands that living with mom and dad. But then he's at Johnny's house. And at Johnny's house, man, it's, it's a free-for-all. You know, Johnny's parents are always working, never home. You know, Johnny's parents really don't invest time into their their child. And then Johnny's like, man, he's listening to, you know, to, you know Tupac and... Whoever else is out there today, listen to all the, you know, blankety, blank, this, blank, that. And then little Pepe is in, under the roof of, of Johnny, and little Pepe is like, you know. <laughs> and, and, and he just starts letting loose, and, 
and, and, and, then, and then Johnny's like playing, you know, video games that, you know, like, you know, shoot a cop or whatever the games they have out there now, um, you know, carjacking and all. And then, you know what, all of a sudden, because you're under the influence or you're under the umbrella of, of, of whatever society or whatever, whatever workplace you live in, because you're in that environment, you start giving yourself permission to do it because, hey, I'm under this king, so I might as well do it. The question is, which one is your king? Because it's time to dethrone this one right here. No, not the fat. You. <laughs> you. You. You have to dethrone you. You will never change until you dethrone you. I will never change if I don't dethrone me. And that's what Daniel said. He said, I purposed in my heart. I purposed in my heart. I purposed in my heart. I purposed integrity in my heart. I purposed uh, purity in my heart. I purposed truth in my heart. I pur if, if, if people stop worshiping, I'll worship all the more. If people stop going to church, I'll go to church all the more. Come on, if people stop believing, I'll believe all the more. If people start doubting, man, I'm going to up my faith game even more. You have to have a cry in 2018. Because if you don't get your cry, you're not going to see God's purpose accomplished in your life. Why? Because you'll be like that guide who took us off the route. You don't need a guy to take you off the route. When you don't know how to lead yourself, you take you off of your route. We find shortcuts. Daniel said, there's no shortcuts with us. I'm ending with this. Maybe you fell off the wagon from your fast. Maybe you've given yourself permission to, well, it's okay. I've already fasted three days. I'm good. And you know better. You know you're believing God for something. But you want to take a shortcut. You know that your three-day God really meant 10 day. Pastor, why are you throwing numbers at me? Well, because you like numbers. You want to make more money, right? You like numbers. But when it costs you something, you want to drop those numbers. We're not fasting as a, as a church once again to look spiritual. We're fasting as a church to get clarity. Fasting as a church to come in agreement so that we see more miracles, more breakthroughs. Well, I don't believe that. Well, I don't care what you believe. I just know one thing. I believe in him. I believe in the God most high. I believe in the God who is above all things. <laughs> so here you have the king. He's ticked off because... He's having all these dreams and nightmares and he's upset because his astrologers, his magicians, his, his, his workers, his, his influencers, good catch, huh? His influencers, everybody is, is, is lying to him. These people that supposedly are spiritual giants are just not being clear and, and, uh, and he gets ticked off and he starts killing them all. And then Daniel finds out like what in the world's going on? And let me read this with you. Daniel 2.28, Daniel says this, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. When you fast, God reveals secrets for your life. Verse number 14, let's back up to verse 19. Then with counsel and wisdom, Daniel answered. How did Daniel answer? With what? Counsel. And what? Wisdom. In other words, Daniel didn't come trying to, trying to think that he was the man. Daniel also counseled and got wisdom from the right people. And it says, and the captain of the king's guard, and who had gone out to kill the wise men of the Babylon. And he answered and he said to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree from the king so urgent? And then Arioch made the decision known to Daniel. So Daniel went in and he asked the king to give him time. Everybody say time. And don't we always want to shortcut our time? 
Some of you, it ain't time yet. And others of you, you're overdue. Grow up. Give birth. I believe that's all in the sermon. Uh, where did I leave off at? Give me an, a verse number. What was it? So 16. So Daniel went in and he asked the king to give him time that, that he might tell the king the interpretation. Listen, fasting will bring interpretation to your life. Then Daniel went to his house and he made the what? Decision. Isn't that what we talked about? No shortcuts in decision. Thought preparation and decision making he made it known to Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego he got with his friends, his crew listen, don't, have, don't be hanging just with anybody just because someone goes to church doesn't mean they have spiritual wisdom huh? just because someone claims to know Jesus doesn't mean that they have revelation you got to get the right people man, they're going to lead you right and so he got with his, his three amigos in verse 18 that they might seek mercies from God of heaven concerning the secret. The secret. Look at this. They're seeking God for the secret things. So that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. They're like, man, we don't want to die. We're not ready to die. We're not ready to go down. Man, we don't want to be like one of them. We want to we seek out most high. And then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Let me tell you something. You got to have the right people, but the real raw relationships are the ones when there is no threat of each other's gift. There's no threat. And so now you have these guys who heard from heaven, but Daniel got the word. Uh, stop trying to be like someone you've never been called to be. Stop trying to look like someone you'll never look like. Uh, you got to just love what God created inside of you and love who God created outside of you. Amen. Come on, you are, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Stop trying to look like someone that you're never going to look like. Stop trying to talk like someone that you'll never talk like. Be the best you. And so Daniel got the revelation from heaven. And, and then he goes to the king and he interprets. And you know what happens? Man, the king is excited. And then they start telling uh, uh, everybody, from now on, we're going to worship another influence. We're going to worship the God of Daniel. And so the king made a decree. Everybody worships the God of Daniel. So guess what? The haters got even more hateful. Why? Because the favor of God in every single circumstance just kept growing and growing in Daniel. With every setback, God brings a greater comeback. I promise you. And then here's, we'll end it with this. Close your Bibles. Close your Bibles. Close your Bibles. Look at this. So you know what they did? They started talking about Daniel behind his back. They started having secret meetings behind his back. They started planning and plotting on how they're going to take Daniel down. But check this out. I love this verse because even as they were trying, Daniel 6, 4, it says, So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find what? They could find what? No charge or what? Or fall. Because he was what? He was what? And how difficult it is to find a faithful person today. How difficult it is to find faithful Christians. It's so, it's so hard. It is rare. If you find a faithful one, keep them. It, look, but, but, but they found Daniel, they could not find error in him. Nor was there any error or fault found in him. And we know later that even though he, he, he had all this hate and, and, and they, they deceived the king and they threw Daniel into the lion's den. But guess what? The secret sauce of Daniel was always prayer. The sauce is in the prayer, guys. And prayer is what will keep the lion who speaks of you shut. You don't have to defend yourself. Prayer will do that for you. You don't have to defend yourself. I'm so, I don't, I'm so sick and tired of defending myself. When I hear people talk junk about me, I just, I let it go now. I do, even in church, even some of you here. I let it go. For what? For what? It always comes back to me. But you know what? I've learned that prayer is the secret sauce that keeps me near to God's heart. And it keeps you right. And that's the difficult challenge, isn't it? To stay right when you're under the umbrella of so much wrong. See, I don't care what everybody else does. All I care about is am I pleasing him?
If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.